everyone. I am back with a new video and this is going to be a tutorial on how I draw the face, eyes, nose, and mouth in a three-quarter view. And I've added a timestamp for the different sections on screen, so feel free to skip to the section that you want to watch. This video is also sponsored by Skillshare, and I do want to thank Skillshare for making this video possible. I think this is the best time for some of us to learn a new skill or to master uh, skill that we already have. And Skillshare is definitely the place to learn just about anything that ranges from art, photography, design, business, lifestyle, and productivity. Uh, there's so many video tutorials online, and the great thing about it is that you learn from a professional or a creative who has succeeded in their respective fields. And you can learn all of these from the comfort of your own home, and in your own time, which I absolutely love. And because they are sponsoring this video, I do have a special link in the description box that gives the first 1,000 to sign up using that link two months free of their premium membership. So that's two months of free trial of their unlimited video content, which is a really great value for money. And this normally costs less than 10 US dollars a month if you pay annually. So that's still a really great deal if you decide to continue after the two months trial period has ended. At the end of this video, I will also be recommending some of my current favorite Skillshare resources um, or classes that I I think will greatly accompany this video so you can go ahead and watch those. It will be linked in the description box along with a special link to the two month free trial. So now on to the video. There is one simple rule that I like to remember when drawing faces at different angles that I think can also be applied to drawing the different facial features such as the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And in order to understand that rule, we have to note a few things. Number one, the head is three dimensional. And I've taken this makeup sponge that looks like a head to show my example. I've marked two lines, one vertical and one horizontal. So when looking at this from a front view, we can see that both vertical and horizontal lines appear straight. However, as we start to rotate this to the left or to the right, we see that the vertical line is actually curved to indicate the object's true form. So the line is pointing left when it's turned to the left, and it's pointing right when it's turned to the right. Once we rotate the sponge head up and down, we can see that now it's the horizontal line that appears curved. It's pointing down when it's tilted down, and it's pointing up when it's tilted up. So you can actually create a combination of different angles, but in this video, we will be stripping it back down to the very basics just to keep this simple for you to understand. Number two, perspective. Perspective or foreshortening play a great role in drawing the face at different angles, and this does get more and more intense or complicated depending on the angle. However, we're going to try and keep this video as simple as possible, so I won't go into so much detail about foreshortening. It's just a good thing to note that when an object is further away from the viewer, it appears smaller, and an object that's closer to the viewer appears larger in comparison, so that's just a general rule of perspective. Number three, symmetry. The head is relatively symmetrical and so are most of the facial features such as the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, especially when looking at these from the front view. And what this means is if you divide the object in half, we have a left side, a center line, and the right side, which is a mirror of the left side, but is also the same width as the left side. In a three-quarter view, however, we're going to have an asymmetrical shape because the center line has either shifted to the left or to the right. However, we still have a left side, we have the new center line, and then we have a right side. And the width of the left side will be different to the width of the right. So these are just a few things to consider because I like to follow a simple rule when drawing the face in a three-quarter view. And this rule is the direction that the object is turned to is the side of the object that appears smaller. And what that all means, hopefully in a much simpler term, is if the head is turned to the left, 
the left side appears smaller. And if the head is turned to the right, the right side appears smaller. And the same thing applies when you tilt the head up or down. Now let's actually start using this rule to draw the face. Starting with the head shape. I like to break it down in two basic shapes, which is the circle and the upside down triangle. And the size of the circle that you draw defines how big or small the head will be. So the bigger the circle, the bigger the head. The smaller the circle, the smaller the head. Then the upside down triangle helps create the bottom half of the face. And by changing the height of the triangle and the distance of this to the circle, we can actually create different face shapes, such as a round shape, a heart face, and triangle face shape. For our demonstration, I am drawing a face that is turned to the left. Therefore, the upside down triangle I am drawing is asymmetrical, where the left side is smaller than the right side. And this is following the rule that I mentioned before. Then going back to the sponge head, um, we will draw a center line of the face, which connects from the top of the head to the chin. And we're going to make this curved to show the head's curved form. And for this demonstration, to keep it as simple as possible, the head is turned only one direction. The, it's turned to the left. It's not looking up. It's not looking down. Therefore, our horizontal guidelines will remain straight. Now, I can have a separate video tutorial of drawing a face looking up or down and, or a combination of looking to the left and looking up or looking to the right and looking down. But for the purpose of this video and keeping it simple, the head is only turned to the left. So let's divide the face into six equal parts, which gives us seven horizontal guidelines. This will help us place certain features of the face. So line one is the top of the head. Line two is the hairline. Line three is the eyebrows. Line four is for the eyes. Line five is the nose. Line six is for the mouth. And lastly, line seven is for the chin. Now for the eyes. In a three-quarter view, I like to draw a leaf shape where the left side is smaller than the right side because the head is turned to the left. So we're following the rule I mentioned before once again. And you can adjust the height of this shape to make small eyes or big eyes. You can also adjust the width of the eyes to make round eyes or wide eyes. You can also adjust the tilt of the eyes to make upturned eyes or downturned eyes. And the distance between both eyes is usually the width of another eye. However, by changing the distance, you can create close set eyes or wide set eyes. Um, then I draw a circle for the pupil and then changing the placement of this indicates the direction of the person's gaze. I also draw arches for the eyelids, which has a similar rule where the left is smaller than the right. And you can change the tilt of this to also create upturned or downturned eyes and changing the distance of the eyelids to the eyes can create either deep set eyes or monolids. For eyebrows, I also start by drawing an arch, then I make it thicker on one end. The same rule applies where I will make the left side smaller than the right, and you can change the degree of the arch's curve to create straight brows or arched brows. For the nose, I start with a circle on the center line of our three-quarter face. You can adjust the size of the circle to create a narrow nose tip or a wide nose tip. You can also adjust the distance of the circle to the center line. So the further away it is from the center line, the pointier the nose. Then I draw two arches on each side of the circle for the nostrils. Same rule applies where the left side is smaller than the right. You can adjust the curve of the arch to show more prominent nostrils. You can also adjust the tilt of the arch and the width of the arch to create diversity. Next, I draw two lines that look like the letter C on each nostril. Same rule applies. Once again, the left side is smaller than the right. And for my demonstration, you can barely see the left side as it's hidden in view by the rest of the nose. And lastly, I like to connect the nose to the eyebrows using a curved line that touches the center line 
and it goes back out to the eyebrows. And you can adjust this curve to create either a straight nose or a hooked nose. I usually only draw one of these curved lines in a three quarter view because this is the bridge of the nose. So I feel like the other one isn't really that important. When drawing a mouth, I also like to start with a leaf shape with a V cut out on top. This follows once again the same rule where the left side is smaller than the right side. I also draw a horizontal line to separate the upper lip to the lower lip and you can adjust the height and the width of this shape to create different kinds of lips. For the ears, I draw a line that looks like a letter C in reverse. I draw this from line four to line five, and I draw this just on the edge of our head. I also like to draw this simple line, which is a very simplified detail of the ear. But if you're really interested in how to draw ears, I highly recommend watching a tutorial on it as well as studying the anatomy of it. Next, I also draw ovals for the cheeks on both sides of the head. This is my stylistic choice, so it's definitely optional. You don't have to draw this if you don't like it. Um, same rule applies as well where the left oval is smaller than the right. And I also draw circles for the chin and the forehead. And for me, these help soften the face when creating the outline. And in order to create the outline to the face in a three quarter view, we first start with the forehead, just following the curve of our initial circle down to the tip of the eyebrow. Then it dips to the eyes and comes back out um, for the cheeks. And this is where the ovals are very helpful. So I follow the curve of the oval and connect it to the chin, which has a circle that also help soften that point so the chin isn't as pointy. And then I round off the upside down triangle that we created before to draw the jawline and then I connect that to the ear. Now for the hairline, for the demonstration, I've decided on a round hairline, but there are a variety that I also like to use that help create different face shapes. So for example, we have a square face shape, a heart face shape, an oval face shape and triangle face shape. And for a round hairline, I basically just draw an arch and the same rule applies where the left side is smaller. And hopefully by this time you would have remembered the rule I've set out in the beginning where the direction that the object is turned to is the side of the object that is smaller. And pretty much this concludes how I draw a face. So I'm just going to finish this drawing off by adding some hair and accessories as well as the neck which come down from the ear. And I know I only tackled one angle of drawing the face in this video, but the rule does also apply to all angles. So I highly suggest playing around with the guidelines that I've mentioned in the video. There are so many ways to adjust the facial features that hopefully you can have some fun creating different looking faces. I would also recommend looking at reference photos to understand the concept of foreshortening and perspective. I feel like hearing this rule and the idea behind it for the first time can be very tricky. So if you need more time to take it all in, definitely feel free to do so. The more you expose yourself to the three quarter view, the more you'll come to understand it. And you might actually fall in love with it that that's the only face that you draw your entire life. There are also other video tutorials from Skill share down in the description box, which I highly, highly recommend watching. Um, I really liked Master Drawing the Face at Angles by Sensei, which offers a different method of drawing the face at a three quarter view, because the method that I've showed you in this video is definitely not the only one out there. There are so many and you might find this complicated and you might find another method easy. So I highly recommend learning from different resources. And I think that Skillshare is there to help you with that. Um, I also really like um, learn how to draw 
Features of the Face by Melissa de Nobrega. I think that this would be really helpful as an in-depth look at how to draw different facial features such as the eyes, the nose, the mouth. I touched about it in this video a little bit, but I feel like this video will be more in-depth. I also really enjoyed cartooning, drawing faces and expressions by Ira Marks. And lastly, fashion illustration, how to paint a watercolor fashion face with stylish accessories by Nina Edwards. I think that these two are great videos to follow up um, my video, especially in terms of applying these techniques into different styles and hopefully into your own unique style as well. So once again, I will link these and more tutorials in the description box below, as well as the Skillshare link for the two months of free premium membership to the first 1000 people to sign up. So go and utilize and take advantage of that link below. And if you have a favorite tutorial that you've watched, leave a link in the comment section for others to see. Lastly, practice a lot. Also, if you have any questions, let me know down below and I will do my best to explain something that might have been confusing. Um, if you also tried this out, tag me on social media. I would love to see your work. I've also included a worksheet and I'm working on getting my tutorials up on my website. So keep an eye out for that. Um, with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please give this video a like, subscribe and push the notification button to know when I randomly upload. And also don't forget to share and leave some feedback for future tutorials. And thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next one. Woo!